Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ice World podcast with me, marine biologist Nadia Frontier, featuring conversations I recorded whilst working in Antarctica with the British Antarctic Survey. This time, we're speaking to Matthew McPherson, one of the mechanical engineers at Rothera. He's passionate about machinery and especially tractors. He's also a self-confessed skier and is enthusiastic about snow and building snow tunnels. So what better place than Antarctica to build snow tunnels as a hobby in his downtime? You'll hear more about that later in the interview. I loved working with Matthew, or McPherson, as he was known by the team, during my second winter at Rothera. McPherson has a very unique skill set and was crucial in making bespoke machine parts for science, from plankton nets to brackets for our beloved remote operated vehicle, who we fondly called Deborah. I remember him making some very key machine parts for Deborah on the metal lathe, which were absolutely crucial in getting it to sink deeper so we could actually attach weights to it. McPherson is most famously remembered by our team for his digging skills, relentless work attitude and making a fantastic igloo at Sky Blue. Matthew, thank you very much for joining me here on the Ice World podcast. We are sat in your workplace in the garage. So what does a vehicle mechanic in Antarctica do? He fixes skidoos mainly, fixes skidoos and looks after all the uh, plant and vehicles we've got on station. Yep. Okay. So what got you interested into wanting to come and take a position like this in Antarctica? I didn't really know what to expect at the time, but snow has been one of those things. I've always been like mesmerized by snow. Snow is just amazing. And that was kind of the big uh, appeal for me was just snow. What is it about snow that attracts you so much to it? It's just cool. Like you can dig in it, you can ski in it. It just makes everything more exciting. And you're a really good skier. So what, so going back actually, what were you anticipating the job would be like when you came down here? Eh, lots of getting dirty, fixing things, just hands on. Uh, didn't expect to be quite so much skidoos. Uh, kind of thought maybe more big plant, but the big plant here, just that reliable, that doesn't really need very much, uh, attention and the uh, skidoos are that unreliable they need a lot of attention so can you talk me through what plant is it that we've got here the station so we've got a handful of different things we've got diggers and uh, wheel loaders then we've also got some track machinery that's out through the winter uh, piston bully a uh, bulldozer and some lifting equipment crane and that type of thing okay what's your favorite piece of machinery Oh, it has to be the piston bully, hands down the piston bully. It's uh, new on station this year and uh, it's got a bit of Antarctic heritage to it. It's been on the continent since around 2010-ish and it's, uh, yeah, it's just such a cool bit of kit. Big, powerful and cool. Really efficient at snow, so the purpose of it is for snow clearing? Purpose of it's for snow clearing and uh, to replace the old snow cart uh, for like passenger transport and uh, kind of recreational things as well, but uh, Due to unforeseen circumstances, it's taking a little bit longer before it gets into full action. But yeah, for, for snow clearing and pushing snow and creating roads on station through the winter, it's just done a fantastic job. Perfect. Do you get much opportunity to drive this machinery or are you mostly behind the scenes fixing it? Well, we've, we've got an operator on station uh, and there isn't just that much mis- machine demand through the winter. But uh, yeah, it's good to get out in the machines now and again. And it's good to get uh, hands-on dirty and fixing them as well. Yeah, you're definitely someone that rocks up to dinner every night with dirty hands. So can you talk me through a day-to-day life as a mechanic? Day-to-day life as a mechanic? Oh, it can be quite varied depending on what's happening on station. Uh, Majority of the days come into the garage and uh, have something to do in here, whether it's uh, servicing or uh, repair work, some diagnostic work when things go wrong, uh, quite a lot of hands-on stuff in the garage and then uh, the usual meal times three times a day but uh, yeah quite uh, quite an exciting life here favorite part about being rather is quite a hard one to pinpoint there's lots of cool things lots of interesting things and I don't think it'd be fair to put any one thing as being the best a few things oh yeah I mean like, mind, like the, ad- extra- the adventure the adventure generally that's probably the biggest thing for me the adventure but like, yeah, the snow, that's pretty cool. Uh, the machinery, that's pretty pretty impressive. Like not many places you get this uh, diversity of machinery that you can work on and it is solely 
the three of us that look after it use it do everything with it so yeah it's quite cool uh, but yeah the people as well like it's a cool place and quite a, a well knit little uh, group of people so that's quite cool how is it for you working like you touched on in a small community of only 23 people over the winter is this something that you've experienced before uh, kind of so I used to work for quite a small company at home and uh, the industry I worked in was quite a small industry as well where like reputation and uh, word traveled fast so yeah it's like the the rumor mill and that type of thing I'm quite used to and uh, yeah the rumor mill what is the rumor mill <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> but you know everybody's business everybody's business exactly yeah there's yeah. no nowhere secret in Rodra what is your background as a mechanic well I started out kind of tractors when I was young and then uh, when I finally decided I had to get a job and uh, leave school, I went to the went to the forestry industry as a mechanic and worked for John Deere Forestry. But uh, I've always had tractors as my kind of hobby, fixing tractors at the weekend and nights. It's always been my hobby. Then that kind of moved on to my work here. There's tractors, there's machinery, there's plants. It's just perfect for me. And the tractors here... Are they quite similar, the Massey Ferguson's that we have? Do you have those at home? Have you worked on these models before? Yeah, so they're, they're just a sta- very standard British Massey Ferguson. I think they were the last of the Massey Ferguson to be built in Britain, actually, the 4370s. Mm. And we've got two of them here. Yeah, they're, they're old school, quite basic, but quite reliable. Not much to go wrong with them. Everything's mechanical. Really quite, uh, quite reliable tractors. Okay. So if you were, if somebody at home was to, you were to give them advice about what it's like to be a mechanic here or what skills they would need, what do you think the crucial things are? Being able to kind of think your way out of situations when you can't just change parts. Uh, parts supply is the biggest kind of downfall being here when things break and you don't have it on the shelf. You can't just get it sent in. You have to wait for the next summer season. So like you have to think of... Uh, ways to work around problems uh just fig- figure things out for yourself that's kind of the big thing if you can figure things out for yourself you can get on just fine and often you need or other people on station need bespoke parts of metal so how do you get around that problem oh yeah we've got quite a big stock of like uh, raw material quite a lot of metal and uh, we've got all the machinery in the workshop we've got to lay them uh, plenty uh, equipment to be able to machine parts so we get quite a lot of like bespoke parts to make that you'd never do that at home you just go to somewhere and buy one off the shelf but quite cool here making your own bushes that type of thing making parts for other departments getting involved with things that you'd never ever be involved with if you were still at home like sort of science projects and making equipment for the scientists and uh, yeah just lots of different things that you'd never never ever do at home do you have the experience of making things out of metal and, and using a metal lathe? How, how do you acquire these skills to be able to make such specific parts? Yeah, there's a lot of it. Just like, yeah, I mean, most people have done some sort of fabrication. Most mechanics do some sort of fabrication at home. But never, don't think anyone really does as much fabrication as you need to be able to do here. But yeah, it's really quite entertaining, a really good challenge to uh, kind of test yourself, try and make new things and uh, improve your kind of skill and ability yeah and you've been especially great for helping our department at making um bespoke parts that we can use for the use of our remote operated vehicle and to keep a plankton net open so that can be towed behind a boat what do you think that you've learned from here that you will take home with you i've learned a lot here a lot uh I would say the biggest thing that I never expected to learn was probably like the power of the weather. Like down here, the power of the wind's the big thing down here. Like you never just fully understand how much power the wind has until you see what it can do with snow, how quickly it can move snow. And like, you'd never be able to keep up with a machine uh, is what the wind can do. Uh, That's kind of the biggest thing I would say I've learned. But yeah, lots of things. There's so many things that we've done new like i've never really worked on petrol uh small petrol things before like so the skidoos are all petrol there's quite a lot of niche things down here that you would never see at home what was the greatest challenge that you encountered not sure uh lots of there's lots of good challenges down here as much like the uh the weather's one challenge 
and learning to deal with that's one challenge. And then the machinery, I guess, is another challenge. And the people, I guess, is, could be another challenge. But yeah, it's all they're all good things. They're all learning curves that you'd never really think of. But yeah. Just building you up. Yeah. So talk to me about tunnelling. What is your obsession with building tunnels? Tunnels are just cool. Like, it's quite cool how you can dig through a pile of snow and you can, it's, 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 it's a non-solid object that can be that supportive that it can form a roof. I just find that fascinating that you can get enough strength out of snow joined together that it can form a roof. And you can go for miles with tunnels. Yeah, great fun. Yeah, and you built one that links from the outside of your window to the front of our door. So that's, if you had to estimate the length, what's that like? I think it's about 15 metres long. I, I measured it when I was trying to decide how far I had to go and I got to 12 metres and I was like, well, I can't be that far. Uh, so I think it's about 15 now. So can you tell me about what you do in the field, in the deep field in the summer season? Because it's quite different. You move out of the garage for a couple of months. Yes. Yeah, so uh, when it comes to uh, summertime in the Antarctic, a lot of scientists and field parties uh, go deeper into the Antarctic and they need support. So uh, we provide skidoos for them. That's kind of the main thing we provide for the uh, deep field operations. And skidoos, skidoos don't always run as well as they should. So support for the skidoos is one of our kind of uh, things through the summer. So go out and uh, fix broken skidoos. The other thing we kind of run is the uh, Sky Blue uh, deep field ice runway. This is uh, a forward logistics site of uh, the British Antarctic Survey. And it's uh, basically an ice runway where the aircraft can all land on wheels. Uh, it's a refueling site, so we refuel aircraft there and uh, stockpile scientific stuff before it goes out further. So yeah, it's kind of the uh, forward uh, logistics site for Bass. And you get to live on site there? Yeah, we get to go out for... Uh, a few weeks at a time usually, uh, run the place, uh, kind of looking after the machinery that's there, got a couple of uh, skid steers, uh, managing snow levels, clearing the runway, that type of thing, and general kind of uh, upkeep. Upkeep would be the kind of main thing, yeah. So what else do you do to entertain yourself outside of work? Ski. Ski, that's my thing. I enjoy skiing. Quite a lot of opportunities here to go skiing if the weather allows. A couple of slopes that are within the local area, which you're free to go and use. And then uh, we've had quite a lot of opportunities throughout winter to go out with the field guides to like some places like Stork Bowl. And then uh, I was quite lucky. I had really good weather from my winter trip and we managed to do four or five mountains uh, in the technical area skiing, which was just brilliant fun. And an experience like I'd never, ever have before and uh, probably never, ever get again. But that was just amazing. I really like what you said to me, that when you stand on top of these peaks, you're just absolutely in the middle of nowhere. Like, there is just nothing around you. Can you how can you describe that feeling? It's quite a weird feeling, knowing that, like, we're the only kind of station that lets people go out, uh, have opportunities like this to go out and mountaineer and ski and climb. And we're really lucky that we get that opportunity. And we're even luckier that the weather sometimes allows us to get out and do it. Uh, and when you're up on top it's like wow can you really are the only people for miles around hundreds of miles around looking at that view and it is spectacular just white everywhere hills and mountains and even the sea like there's not many places you can stand on top of a mountain covered in snow and look at the sea it is an unreal place and you are also the drummer in the band oh yeah the uh the stepping drummer i'm not uh wouldn't call myself a drummer but uh I hit the drums, yeah. I think you do a pretty good job at, at keeping everyone in check. Yeah, it's, it's been good fun. It's another skill that's uh, it's one of those things I've always wanted to try. And uh, yeah, it's quite enjoyable going in and having a, a practice with everyone once a week. Is there anything from home that you miss? Uh, I'll be honest, not really. Not really. Uh, not really at all. The, the thing I probably miss the most is trees. Miss trees. But that's about it. Yeah, and any of your Scottish culture? Not really. I can uh, I can do without that. 
Yeah, we've got plenty of snow, so snow keeps me occupied. I don't have to worry about Scottish culture. And you re- well, you recreated the Cayley. Oh yeah, we've, we've had a couple of Cayleys, so that's been good fun. Uh, uh, traditional stovies for a tea, yeah. Uh, oh, what's a stovie? For- stovie for is uh, like a tatty kind of stew with beef and that in it. And, you- and for English people, that'll be potatoes, not tatties. <laughs> <laughs> and you organised the Cayley event, so you led the dancers... Oh, that was great fun. Yeah, we had a good Kayleigh, uh, organised the night and uh, uh, did it in the dining room, uh, got all the music on and uh, kind of taught everyone how to dance a bit, yeah. And what I really like is you said that um, at school you used to have the Kayleigh as part of your PE lessons. Yeah, we used to used to get uh, social dancing part of our PE lessons in the run-up to Christmas time. Oh, very good fun. Social dancing. Cool. Thanks for your time, Matthew. And it's been great speaking to you. Well, thank you very much. Matthew is currently back in the world of big plant machines, working with a company called SD Agri as an agricultural engineer. I got to ski with him at the start of the year in the Cairngorms, and I must say the snow was much reduced in quality compared to our fresh, powdery Antarctic slopes. If the idea of working in one of the most beautiful and remote regions of Earth appeals, then do check out the job section of the British Antarctic Survey's website, where roles from scientific to support staff are posted regularly. And if you enjoy the Ice World podcast, please tell people and think about writing a nice review. It really does help us spread the word. I'm Nadia Frontier, and thank you for listening to this episode of the Ice World podcast. Join us next time to hear what it's like to be a diving officer at Rotherham.